Just as there are economists who've tried to find market solutions to the problem of externalities, so there are some who've tried to find market solutions to the problem of public goods. One approach is in following the Coase theorem, it may be possible to establish property rights for certain kinds of public goods. Fisheries have got public goods characteristics about them. Fisheries tend to be treated as a common property resource. So the problem is that there's a race to fish. Who's going to be the first one to get to the fish while they're still there? Many of the world's oceans have simply been overfished. Yet here in Iceland, they've got healthy, growing stocks of fish. How have they achieved it? They've done it with the use of markets. Well, well basically in the, uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, in Iceland, as in every other fishing nation, we started to uh, notice that there was an overfishing problem. The herring stocks, two of them here in Iceland, they basically disappeared. They were overfished. And, you know, government had to step in, help the fishing fleet, change them from uh, pelagic fisheries into the demersial fisheries, in the bottom fishing, catching cod instead. And that led to a new overfishing problem in the cod stocks, in the demersial stocks. And in 1977, they took up a system where they limited the vessels per number of days in the year. Despite this system, despite trying to limit the total catch, the industry was always fishing too much way beyond the total allowable limits. The enforcement was basically not in place and it's, in fact, it's not enforceable. Like we can see over in the EU today. Now they have this problem still over there. So, new experiment, an IQ system. Each vessel would get its own fishing quota in the demersal fisheries. Individual transferable quotas, ITQs, were introduced in 1983 in a bid to conserve the resource. So what they've done is established property rights in their fisheries. And as we'll see, these property rights give incentives to fishers to look after the fish stocks. The uh, scientists recommended to go down to 200,000 tons of cod in the following year. Down from about 400,000 tons. Cut it in half. We already had too many vessels catching the 400,000 tons. But if we're only going to catch 200,000 tons, we have way too many vessels. So what are we going to do? One way would have been for the government to buy out part of the fleet. Another option would be go to an ITQ system, tradable quota system, where the government would not have to step in and buy out the vessels. Let the industry itself buy out the vessels. So they trade the quotas between them, and thereby we shrink the fleet, get fewer numbers of vessels, and we adjust the fleet to the fishing that's allowed. And basically that's the purpose of the system and why we put it in place. Cont control the overfishing problem and cut down the fleet to a manageable size where you, can, you have the right size of fleet to catch this amount of fish. The key to the permit system is that the permits are tradable. If some fisherman wants to, he can increase the size of his output by buying a permit from another fisher. If you want to leave the industry, you can sell your permit. Now, why is this a good idea? Because the most efficient fishers are the ones that will buy the permits, and the least efficient will leave the industry. You invest in a vessel, and how much uh, income do this vessel need? Yes. And to, to, to get that to get that income, you need to have access to some quotas. Yeah. And what we did was to buy more quotas. We have cut down the vessels about 50% and the factory 50%. And the, the company and the owners would decide to stay in the, in the business, to buy the other parties out. So what you've now got is a system where there's a limit to the total amount of fish being taken out of the water, but it's being done in the most efficient way possible. And the people who own the rights to fish have a vested interest in healthy stocks. They're the ones that will gain if they limit the extent to which they take fish out of the water. They're the ones that will gain as the fish stocks grow. As a result, incentives are created for the industry to adjust the level of harvesting capacity to match the resource. 
Removing this excess capacity enables the surviving industry to operate profitably even with low stock levels. The limited property rights implicit in the ITQ enable individual fishers to directly benefit from stock recovery, and hence create incentives to adopt a more conservation-oriented approach to harvesting. In general, you think the system that Iceland has developed works pretty well? Yes, I mean, it is, uh, 20, it is 25 years since we started it, and we have tried other things. You, uh, you have to determine how much people are fishing. Everybody accepts that. Yes. And it, it gives you 2 million tonnes per year. If you control it, 2 million every, every year, next 100 years. This fish, fishing grounds around Iceland are the best fishing grounds you can get. As a result, Iceland is the only Atlantic nation to have healthy and sustainable cod stocks. As we've seen so often before, the way we maximize the efficient use of scarce resources is by having a competitive market. And what the Icelanders have succeeded in doing is to create a competitive market within the context of fisheries. So although they limit the total amount of fish taken out of the water in any one given year, it's still being done in an efficient way because of the market in tradable permits. There are problems with the Icelandic fisheries policy. Who can own coast quota in Iceland? You have to have a vessel. You have to be within the fishing industry to own a quota. So an individual who's investing for himself, you know, an individual that's not you know, connected to the fishing industry, he can go out buy a building somewhere, he can buy a farm somewhere, or he can invest in various things, but he cannot invest in fishing. He cannot buy quota, for example. You know, if you want to have a more perfect market, you should open that up. The government hasn't gone as far as many economists would want them to go.